Gareth Hughes. Thank you, Mr Speaker. To the Minister of Transport, what is his response to the finding of the IBM commuter pain survey that investment in public transportation is key to reducing congestion and commuter stress? Honourable Stephen Joyce. Uh, Mr Speaker, I note that improving public transportation, better management of the roading system and providing greater flexibility to work from home were all cited by commuters in the survey as measures by which transport stress can be reduced. The good news, Mr Speaker, is the Government is very active on all of these fronts, investing nearly $2 billion in commuter rail in Auckland and Wellington, better managing the roading system by completing the Auckland and Wellington roading networks with projects like Waterview and Victoria Park to extract the full benefits from those networks, and three, wearing another hat, investing $1.5 billion in ultra-fast broadband to provide better telecommunications and encourage telecommuting from home, amongst other things, to reduce the need to travel around our cities. Gareth Hughes. How can he reduce congestion for stressed Kiwi motorists when he has cut funding for every activity other than new state highways, including cuts of 26% for walking and cycling and cuts of 50% for public transport infrastructure? The Honourable Stephen Joyce. Uh, Mr Speaker, the member is simply completely incorrect with those assertions. Gareth Hughes. How can the Minister claim to be providing for a balanced transport system when over 80% of new project funding since he became Minister has been for new motorways. The Honourable Stephen Joyce. Well, Mr Speaker, I would point out to the member the roading system carries by far the vast bulk of uh, commuters and also freight movements through New Zealand. And that's very, in fact, uh, the, uh, the highway referred to by the member opposite ca carries more traffic, more people per day than the entire Auckland commuter rail network currently. Now, it's good that we're investing in commuter rail because that has the potential to grow over time. But the member is deluding himself if he thinks that's the solution given where we start from. Supplementary. Can he confirm that the majority of conventional economic benefits from the CBD rail loop in Auckland would be congestion reduction for road users. The Honourable Stephen Joyce. Uh, Mr Speaker, yes I could. Uh, unfortunately the numbers are not that high and it's not until you get out to the, in quotes, transformational benefits that, for example, Treasury have rather severe doubt over uh, that you actually get to uh, much larger BCRs. But that's a project that we will assess over time. It's important that we assess it with clear eyes and carefully. Uh, because, as the member may have noted from earlier in this session, the government has to be very careful fiscally. Gareth Hughes. So given the CBD rail loop will significantly benefit motorists, stimulate three times as many wider economic benefits as Poofoy to Wellsford, the Holiday Highway, and is supported by Auckland, will he now prioritise the CBD rail loop? The Honourable Stephen Joyce. Uh, Mr Speaker, uh, the member is well ahead of himself in that respect. As I would point out to him, he's talking about notional future demand versus current demand in comparing two projects and also comparing a commuter project with an interregional roading project, and the two are rather different. But there are many questions to be answered. There are many questions to be answered in the CBD rail case before we go uh, and even consider who might fund it and, for example, exactly how many cars it might take off the road five years after it opens, which is not apparent from the business case and would seem to be a reasonably important thing for something which is promoted as a congestion buster. Given the Minister has said more analysis is needed, why did he commit billions of dollars to the Puhoi to Wellsford Holiday Highway in March 2009 when the business case was not completed until nine months later in December 2009, and as the Minister said only four weeks ago, quote, no work was done on the project prior to it being announced as a road of national significance. Honourable Stephen Joyce. Uh, Mr Speaker, could I point out to the member that uh, the nomination of a road of national significance is not the final um, shape of the project and it of course is continuing to be refined. But again, if I may refer to the difference between a notional project which talks about projected possible demand in the future and one that is creating the demand and is under spec right now and it is quite obvious that the road that he keeps trying to compare with this commuter rail project has the demand on it right now and needs to be addressed for a range of reasons including safety, economic growth and connection between Northland and the City of Auckland. When will the Minister admit that all the evidence demonstrates that public transport, like the CBD rail loop in Auckland, is a better way to cut congestion and reduce commuter stress than wasting billions on his pet uneconomic motorways? 
The Honourable Stephen Joyce. Uh, Mr Speaker, I have to say that I think that the member's suggestion is reasonably adolescent, if I may say so, <laughs> because debating which projects should proceed does not meet unquestioning support for any project on the grounds that one transport mode is good and another one is bad. We have to be slightly more mature than that. Question number seven, the Honourable Annette King. Very arrogant.